Hello everyone, this is Blake, WorksDB71, finally trying to get together a non-sleeve related video. Sorry guys, you don't know how hard this has been. Uh, trying to actually find time to do a video that doesn't have sleeves involved. I know you're tired of it. I am too. So this is a very late response to Fred Big Star 1000's Obsessions um, thread. Um, since joining the vinyl community or finding the vinyl community late, late summer, um, my year, my my year is much smaller. Uh, so these are my obsessions that um, I've really had since I've joined the community, and and a lot of these uh, have been shown uh, either by myself or other or others, but uh, nevertheless they are uh, obsessions. There are a few things in here that I haven't seen, um, and hopefully it'll turn. Uh, some of the other viewers on to to um, some music that they wouldn't have otherwise uh, picked up. So we'll get right to it. Egg. I've showed this in my last non-sleeve video. Um, like I say, after after I got my hands on Egg, uh, I've been playing the full lot of it. And as I said in my previous video, uh, this was in the video for Derek's 300 subscriber thread. I, I use this as my 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 saltine cracker, my go-between uh, when I flip between classical and, and non-classical type music. It's just, it's got everything uh, you're looking for in terms of a progressive, early progressive rock um, piece of work, uh, egg. I highly recommend it and I have been obsessing over this for for quite quite some time. Um, so, a similar album, although certainly not as highly um, criticized or publicized, is Five Bridges by The Nice. Um, some of you will know, uh, many of you will know, that a key member of Nice, uh, let's say, uh, Keith Emerson, uh, Lee Jackson, and uh, blah, blah, blah. oh shoot, who's the third cat? Chosen? Oh uh, no! Oh, this is embarrassing. Well, anyway, Keith Emerson of Emerson Lake and Palmer. This was his band prior to ELP and the Nice. A uh, very much like Egg. Um, was very very uh, influential in in introducing classical uh, musics to um, the progressive world. It's on Phillips. Um, I guess this is yeah. This appears to be a German uh, pressing of of Five Bridges, and uh, the first side is called Five Bridges Suite. Uh, a mixture of progressive rock kind of stylings with um, some classical pieces, um, and then on side two there there are direct influences of classical. You have um, Tchaikovsky's Symphony Number no. Six, uh, Pathetic. Um, there's a Brandenburg Concerto uh, sample in here. Um, just another really good piece of music. Uh, for folks who are interested in progressive and uh, classical, with, with classical sentiments. Um, so, the vinyl community introduced me to the ECM label, and naturally, um, when, I, when I started hearing Keith Jarrett's work, I, I quickly latched onto it and found, found that I, I really, really appreciated uh, his recordings, especially the more um, improvisational style recordings that he did. I mean, it, it literally sounded like many times he would just go in on a date with ECM and just play for a few hours. They they cut cut the tape to, to match an album length or, or two, 
and uh, release it. And it's often always really, really good uh, to listen to. So this is a piece uh, facing you, um, Keith Jarrett, uh, on piano, solo piano. I don't think anybody else is on here. No, this just Keith uh, playing. Very, very good. And uh, again, I'm, I, I find that I pick this up quite often when I want some uh, some Keith Jarrett in in, in my daily uh, routine. Um, okay, another one. Uh, certainly. VC uh, inspired and highly praised. I don't need to say anything about it. I'll try to pronounce it. Egg Bamyasi. Uh, cans. Uh, very, very um, influential, influential and uh, highly groundbreaking, crop rockish release. Um, very, very good, good stuff. Uh, uh, mine is the the reissue by Spoon. Uh, I can't find the original. Uh, I guess if I did, it cost me way too much money. But this works. Can. All right. So Blake, you're a classical dude. Why you keep showing all these non-classical pieces? So this is a classical piece that I really I I'm, I do intend to spend uh, a lot of time on and do one of my. Uh, in-depth uh, videos on um, directly or indirectly a lot of you guys have have heard some of this music uh, Joaquin Rodrigo's um, th this this album has two of his pieces uh, Concerto Andalus and Concerto de Aaron Wes this is the piece that that haunts me um, I'm obsessed over this piece uh, I know earlier I've told you that I spent a lot of time with uh, Dvorak's New World Symphony. This is probably the second one on my list of classical pieces that I spend so much time listening to, especially after I've learned some of the background behind it. Haunting, chilling, and very, very inspirational, hopeful. Um, but I'll spend time on that in another video. Uh, so this is a Mercury issue, probably one of the best recordings of Concerto Aaron was that um, I've heard um, the Romero brothers. Um, you got these. It's basically a family of Romero brothers and a father. I think, uh, yeah, father's here. Um, this guy. Uh, anyway, Angel uh, gets the uh, spotlight on on this piece, and it's very, very, very good. Uh, again, I'm obsessed, and. Uh, the uh, Mercury Living Presence, uh, very famous label there. Uh, very, very good recording. Um, if you know this piece of work, um, this is the, the recording you want to find. Um, I think it actually has been reissued on a, um, a budget label, uh, so you don't have to spend the big bucks on the Mercury Living Presence one, um, but this one, uh, very, very, very well worth uh, finding if you can get it. 30, 40, 50 bucks, you won't go wrong. Uh, fantastic recording. Uh, again, Joaquin Rodrigo, Concerto Duran Wes, uh, Romero, I'll talk more about it later. Some of you have heard some of it already. And you either know it or don't, um, especially you Miles Davis fans. Um, all right, so uh, getting into, uh, I've got three more, four more pieces here. Those shocking, shaking days. Um, this has been shown several times. I sent a copy of this to um, Benny in UK. Uh, obsessed over this, mostly because it's a combination of musics. Um, rock, funk, Indonesian, um, progressive kind of stuff, psychedelic kind of stuff. It's just, you know, a three LP set uh, full of stuff that it's very unfamiliar to my ears. So if I want something weird and, and man, I'm turning blue when I uh, <coughs> show this orange cover. Wow. So, yeah, those shocking, shaking days, very, very cool stuff. Um, 
Now, a piece that uh, is probably more of a, uh, what's the word, a, I don't know, candy, I, I'm not quite sure. I have been a fan of Tori Amos for a long time. Uh, early 90s, I, I was digging her, uh, and I, I kind of stumbled across this while looking up uh, some classical music of someone else's, and I, and I didn't, I honestly didn't know that it was coming out, uh, but when I caught wind of Headhunters, no, is it Night of Hunters, not Headhunters, I'm getting my Herbie Hancock mixed up with this. So, Tori Amos, uh, Knight of Hunters. Um, this is a, uh, a very back to Tori Amos roots kind of recording. Um, she is a very, very capable, classically trained pianist, um, herself. And this album, she gets back to some of that. Uh, playing style that she used to do. Yes, it's still full of her breast, uh, her breathly, uh, whispering vocals, um, and and also she's taught her daughter how to do the same damn thing. Um, it's her daughter there. I presume that's her daughter. Um, her daughter's in some tracks uh, on here too, singing with uh, Tori. Very, very Tori-like. Um, Probably in, in, I don't know, maybe 10 years, we'll hear her daughter. Uh, I'm sure she has a name, and her name is... I don't know what her name is. I'm not going to waste my time hunting it. We'll hear her, and uh, we'll know, oh, that sounds like Tori Amos. Uh, anyway, back to this. Uh, it's released on Deutsche Grammophon. That's, that's one of the most surprising things to me, uh, that the German classical label... Uh, has released this uh, Tori Amos work. Very cool label here, but you can see that tiny little Deutsche Grammophon um, logo there. Um, there are some classical instruments on here and instrumentation. Uh, she's got like a what sounds like a an ensemble size group, maybe maybe fifteen perform uh, instrumentalists. Uh, working with her on him on here it's very very nice uh, how to describe it like I said very Tori Amos like um, but she seems to as in most of her work she seems to take you on this um, this journey where you think you've got pieces of it but then she confuses you with with other lyrics and then you go well well maybe that wasn't it um, but that's very Tori like um, an obsession because I'm trying to figure out what she's what she's telling us here. Uh, love it, highly recommended if you like Tori. Uh, all right, another um, I guess. Man, I can't find the word. What is the word? <laughs> I, I don't want to say candy. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, Stanley Clark. Um. I find that I pulled this because I like the the very I I mean it's in the nicest kind of way the, the commercial uh, jazz fusion kind of appeal this has um, when I want to tap my toes to a good bass line I pick up Stanley Clark's School Days uh, really really like this this is probably one of the easiest to find pieces of of my obsessions this year I see it everywhere. Pick it up if you don't have it and listen to it. There are some tracks on here that, that are very, very awesome. Um, school Days, of course. Uh, Quiet Afternoon, The Dancer. But the, the piece that I really like the most, um, I think, uh, I'm going to have to say Desert Song. Uh, John McLaughlin's on this that piece. Uh, very, very good, good music. Um, this is on the uh, Nimperer label. Uh, again, you probably can find this everywhere for three or four bucks. Pick up a good copy, you'll, you'll enjoy it. Now, um, one other obsession is a very new obsession. Uh, one of my goals for 2012 uh, is to try to pick up 
modern music uh, or modern releases uh, to support the vinyl uh, vinyl production effort. And what you hear in the background is um, Trombone Shorty, for true. I actually got introduced to Trombone Shorty through an NPR segment uh, where they were talking about, you know, his appeal uh, coming from a uh, New Orleans jazz family um, or in an environment where he got to play in a bunch of famous New Orleans jazz families. And, and uh, he's becoming very popular in the touring circuit. And so they did a piece on him promoting uh, this piece of, or this album that was coming out. I think this came out in September, maybe, or uh, actually maybe it was October. Uh, Trombone Shorty for True. I mean, there are other folks on here. Warren Hayes, Jeff Beck, uh, Kid Rock, a couple of the Neville brothers. Um, Ladisi is singing in the background right now. Uh, very, uh, a very modern kind of fusion thing where he uh, is doing very popular styling music, very commercial kind of music uh, with, with some good jazz, uh, traditional jazz stuff. Uh, very, 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 very capable uh, trombonist and trumpet and about any other kind of instrument um, he, he can play. Um, so th this is my most recent obsession uh, that, that I, I'm sharing uh, with you on this thread. And we'll take it out with some more uh, traditional New Orleans style jazz that he plays with. Hopefully you can hear from me. Released by Verb Forecast. Often reminds me a lot of some of Lenny Kravitz's his work. Um, I don't know why he comes to mind, but, but he does. I guess it's the, the rock infusion. Alright guys, those were my obsessions for late 2011. We'll come back to you later. Good thread, uh, Fred. Take care. Bye-bye.